today we're going to be taking these old weathered beat up headlights and make them look brand new again and we're going to be doing it the right way and you won't have to worry about them fading or yellowing in six months or a year from now this headlamp is from a 2015 ford transit and as you can see i did remove it from the vehicle now you do not have to remove the headlights from the vehicle to restore them however if it's easy enough to remove and it doesn't take a lot of effort, I recommend you remove the headlamp and work with it on a bench. I think you'll get better results that way. You also eliminate the possibility of doing damage to the surrounding paint or trim. So if you can take it off the vehicle, I suggest you do that. These are the tools that I'm using today and a different variety of the sandpaper. I'm gonna start with a 600. I'm gonna go into a 1200, then a 2000. And then I go into another 2000, potentially. This one is actually a little finer than 2000. I'm gonna finish with a 3000 Trizac. I'm going to use a Velcro back attachment for the drill. And we're gonna hit it with the 600 first. And then we're gonna hit it at the end after everything is sanded with a, a hook and loop uh, compound pad. I'm going to start using the 600 sandpaper to get all the imperfections and the old coating off of the headlight. I'm using the drill on a lower speed. The high speed does not work well with a setup like this. This is probably going to be the most crucial part of the sanding because this is where you start to work out all the imperfections. You really want to take your time here and make sure that you get all the areas of the headlamp that are going to be sanded further and then polished. You can also use a more aggressive grit if you have a heavier damaged headlamp. You can use a 400. I would try to stay away from the 400 or more aggressive grits unless you absolutely have to get those imperfections out. On this particular headlamp, the 600 worked just fine. I'm going to wipe the headlamp down so I can inspect the, the sanding process and see if I need to go a little bit further or if I'm ready to move on to the next grit. I'm now ready to move on to the next grit, which is going to be the 1200. Now you can use an 800 between the 6 and the 1200. I didn't feel it was necessary for this particular headlamp, but some people may want to consider using the 800 before making that jump. With the 1200 grit, I'm actually going to do a hand wet sand. So the first was a machine dry sand, now we're going into a hand wet sand. The goal here is just to try to refine those heavier 600 grit scratches and just take them down a little bit before we start working our way up to the finer sandpapers. I'll go ahead and work my way from end to end and I'll constantly keep everything lubricated and I will squeegee and check progress as I go along. I wanted to show you the back what I did here. Since I removed the headlight, I wanted to make sure it was stable and not wobbling around. I took the factory mounting locations and I put some uh, drywall screws in to a two by four. And then I did one on this mounting hole and then just put a little strip to attach to make just kind of a secure foundation. I think it's fine to do without. And if you do this, you need to be careful because this is plastic these tabs here. So if those break, you have some big problems ahead of you there. Just be careful if you do it this way. I did it mainly this way because I'm going to be wrapping the headlight and I know I'm gonna be stretching the wrap over the headlight. So I wanna make sure that it's nice and stable since it's not on the vehicle. I'm gonna move on to the third stage of sanding here. This is also on the machine and wet sanding. So this will be a 2000 grit and I will take my time with this one as well end to end to make sure we get every little scratch refined that we did with the 1200. So this is a big jump from the 1200 to the 2000. You can also go 1500 here, but I'm going to go with the 2000 for this particular headlamp. Once again, I'm using the same solution. It's a couple drops of dish soap mixed in with some water 
and uh, I used a spray bottle. I give it just a little bit of a shake. Uh, I don't shake it too aggressively. I just want to mix the soap in so it's not too sudsy, but it does give good lubrication when you spray it on. Keep in mind there are a number of ways to do this as far as you know, wet sanding, dry sanding, the grid of sandpaper that you use, and then every situation is also different which, with each headlamp depending on what your goal is and also what kind of degradation happened to the headlamp. Now, I've watched the several channels in particular that do headlight restorations and they claim there's only one way to do this, you have to do it my way, and that's bullshit. I'm sorry, but that's the first time I've ever cursed on one of my videos, but I don't like when people say that there's only one way to do things and it's got to be my way. Uh, it's just not true. There are a number of ways to handle situations like this and being an automotive paint professional for many years, um, I realized that there are a number of ways to do wet sanding and polishing or even dry sanding and polishing uh, when it comes to paint and a lot of times that information and that knowledge can be transferred over to doing headlamps as well. Right here I'm moving on to the final stages of the sanding. Uh, this will be a hand sand with the 3000 Trizac. Uh, this is my favorite uh, sanding discs that I use for auto body as well. Uh, they are super expensive. One disc uh, is about, if you can find it for $10, that's on the cheaper side, they can go up to like $13 per disc. The good news is they do last a long time, so and they are super high quality. The other ones I were using were a little bit cheaper. Uh, I'll put links to everything that I use down below as well. But this is the final stage of the sanding with the 3000 uh, right before we polish. Now, one thing I did not show is that I actually did another wet sand machine polish with the uh, 2000 again. And that 2000 was more equivalent to a 2500. So I would say I went from the 600 to the 1200 to the 2000 and then to a 2500. And now I'm finishing off on the last stage here with a 3000 wet the 3m trizac pad so i'm just going to take my time here i'm going to hit every single corner with the hand sand and then i'll squeegee it down take a final look at it if everything looks good to me i will dry it off completely and get ready to do a for the compound i'm going to be using a v32 from chemical guys it's a pretty aggressive compound and you do not have to use by any means this particular compound there are many compounds available this one, like I said, is a little bit more aggressive, and you can get uh, you can get specific compounds for plastic. I don't think that's necessary, but they do make them, and they do work pretty well. I'm going to use a two-step process here. I'm going to use the compound to get any of the remaining heavy scratches out, and then I'm going to follow up with a machine polish to eliminate the swell marks from the compound. You can use, depending on your sanding process, if you took down the sanding real fine and your scratches aren't heavy at all, you can go straight into a polish. You don't have to do a compound, but I took a different approach here. I am using the compound first and following up with the polish. I'm going to be moving on to a polish now, and I'm using a Meguiar's polish. You'll notice there was a little duct tape on the container. Uh, the sides split on it and I had to seal it up. So uh, anyway, I'm using, I'm also switching over from uh, the rotary tool, which I use for compounding to more of a, a random orbital uh, polisher here. So, and then you can also notice that the headlight is sliding on the table. And I ended up correcting that later when I did the wrap on it by putting a rubber mat underneath the wood, which I should have done here. Uh, but I didn't. I was in the uh, I was in the zone, and I didn't want to stop, so I just kept pulling the headlight closer towards me as it slid away from me. Uh, but ideally, uh, this method actually worked really well building that wood frame. But I should have put the rubber mat underneath it at this point uh, as I saw it sliding away. So I just continued to work here. I'm gonna polish this up, get it to where I need it to be, and then we're gonna use a wax and grease remover to remove any of the residuals and take a closer look, see if anything needs more refining. And then if I'm happy with the way everything looks, we're gonna go right into the wrap. So right there, I'd use the wax and grease remover. Uh, it was from uh, Mothers is the name of the uh, company. CMX is the name of the product. I will also put that down below, but I like to use a wax and grease remover. 
Before I use alcohol, I'll actually finish off with an alcohol wipe right before I do the wrap to make sure we have no contaminants and the adhesive on the wrap does stick the way it should. I'm going to be using the slip solution that I made to spray every surface that's going to be in contact with the protective film, including my hands as you saw there. So I actually pre-cut the film out to the length of the headlight and you're going to see that I'm going to coat the headlight liberally. I'll also coat the PPF, the film, on both sides. Not only both sides of the film, but I'll also spray the front and the back of the, the actual packaging. Uh, I, I know a lot of people have problems. They say they start to peel it back and the film starts to stick on itself and stick everywhere and they have to end up throwing the piece away. So I think that if you follow a method similar to this, you won't have any issues with the film sticking. As I start to peel it back, I actually start to spray it again. I don't just peel the whole piece off. So I'll spray it, pull it, spray it, pull it, and then I'll continue to wet and re-wet every surface, including my hands. The reason why I wet my hands is if your hands are dry and you touch the inside of the PPF, inside of the film, you can potentially transfer your fingerprints, which will show in the final product. So make sure every surface is sprayed with a slip solution. In this case, I'm using just a few drops of soap with water. It's exactly the same formula that I used when I did the uh, wet sanding. So now once it's on the headlight itself, I'm going to start to use a rubber squeegee. It's a, it's a pretty semi-rigid rubber squeegee, and I'm going to start to hit the flat spots, the easiest spots that are going to be to coat with the film. And I'm going to start to, to tack down the film onto the headlight. And that way, once it's tacked onto the headlight, I can start to stretch it around the areas that are not so easy and try to pull out all those little fingers, which you see there on the bottom and on the top, those little like triangles on the film itself. So once I tack that down, I'll start to work out some of the outside fingers on the easy parts. And then you'll see I'll move over to the left side where it curves around and I'll start to stretch it out and I'll try to pull out as many fingers as I can and then I'll start to tack down that side. You can see also here that I switched to a plastic squeegee. This is actually something that I use when I do body work. So I took that out and I started to use that. Now right here, I'm using the tack solution. And the tack solution is I displace the slip solution with the tack solution. Sounds weird, but this is an alcohol based. That's a 20 to 80% ratio of distilled water to alcohol. By the way, I am using distilled water in both the slip solution and the tack solution. And when I sprayed it under the film there, I was trying to make sure that those edges that are a little challenging, they get glued down with the adhesive there and the, the tack solution does help with that. So I got that out the fingers out in that area as much as I can, then you'll see I grabbed that heat gun and I just applied a little bit of heat to, to make the film flexible. Uh, and that way I can start to work it out, work those fingers out even more and get it as flat as possible. I, I will still continue to work those fingers out till the very end, but um, I will get them out as much as possible. So right now I have the film pretty, pretty much where I want it. I still have some little ridges and fingers on the perimeter, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cut all around the, the light, take all the excess off, and once I have that off, I have my edges and then I'm going to start to work with those edges uh, with either the heat gun and my fingers or the heat gun and a smaller firmer uh, squeegee. So I'll start to cut this off. This is all sped up here. Um, and then once that's off, I'll just work the final edges down exactly where I want them. And then I'll take a microfiber cloth and squeeze out the remaining part of the solution that's under the film uh, and that microfiber towel will um, absorb that final liquid and tack down the very edges. And then we'll be all set with this project. That's that little squeegee that I was talking about that actually came with the kit. Uh, I do have a, a few other smaller squeegees, but this one was angled in the way that I liked. So I used the one that came with the kit. Uh, and this is, it's not really a full kit. It's the PPF. Uh, this is a 12 inch wide by 60 inch long. So this is the final product here. Um, very happy with the way it came out. This, you have to remember, this is a work truck and these lights have been abused. They have rock chips or had rock chips all over them. 
and what we're doing is we're just going for a full restoration uh, that'll last five years or more. That picture right there was the bottom was the headlight that I replaced, and that's how the the headlight looked before I started this process. And on top of the finished product on the passenger side that I restored. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll be back with more Forerunner, Tacoma, and off-roading adventures and modifications coming soon. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do that. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. And don't forget, life begins where the pavement ends. I'll see you in the next one, guys.